Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. I'm your host VGM Corn, and in the last one we killed Chaos Witch Quelag and got to this delightful place, the Demon Runes, where there are a bunch of people begging me to do something, probably kill them with eggs on their back, but I'm not going to do that, mostly because I'm a bad person. Also I appear to be dead, so that's interesting. I don't remember being dead. Why did I die? Right. I remember I got hit by a giant boulder. Okay, so <clears throat> in the last one we beat Quelag and now I'm going to go ahead and spend the experience off of beating her for just a good bit of stats all around. I put two points into attunement here as you can see to get myself a second spell slot for pyromancy. So that means I can now equip either combustion or power within as well as fireball. And I'm going to take combustion because power within while extremely powerful is also extremely dangerous and just doesn't seem like the kind of thing I should be doing. Now, I also promised in the last one that I would show off something that might make you change your opinion of the game, especially if you don't know about this, and I actually kind of wonder how many people don't know about the Secrets of Dark Souls, because unless you look online, there's a lot of stuff that's extremely easy to miss, and this spot I'm about to show you is one of them. So if you come over to this wall and hit it, you will find yourself a secret wall, and behind that, this guy, who can talk. Oh what have we here? Are you a new servant? Hmm. But you have no eggs. Ah, no matter. Go along and have audience with our fair lady. I pray that you will mind your manners. And of course, being told that we're a new servant, he wriggles away, horrifyingly. And as you might have guessed, it seems like that might be something done on purpose. And here we have the other Chaos Witch. She is a fire keeper and the keeper of a, a new covenant that I will actually join. This is the Chaos Servant Covenant, as that achievement helpfully shows us, and is actually the one that I'm going to join for the majority of this playthrough. Now, I will be abandoning my other covenant to do this, which will make me a sinner and also make me vulnerable to being invaded by blue phantoms, but that's half the fun of the game. Besides, isn't she pretty in a horrifying kind of way? And here, you might start putting the pieces together that you may not exactly be a good person. Now, what you can do in this covenant is offer humanity, and what you want to do is offer 30. I'm going to offer 10 immediately, because that is just going to be useful right off the bat. But 30 is the goal that we're going to go for for the end of this playthrough to stop a certain event from happening later on. This is the only way to stop that event, and I'll get into more detail about that as we go on. So, Chaos Witch Quelag, well, she, as it turns out, is only protecting her sister who's in here with the eggs. As you can see, her sister is suffering from some kind of horrible fate, but you don't get to know a lot about that unless you have the witch ring from one of the gifts in the early game or trade an item to get the witch ring, which I probably will attempt to do at a later date. Actually, I think I know how I can do that and not mess up anything, so I will attempt to show that to you guys. Of all the covenants in the game, I think this is one of the most interesting ones. The Chaos Witches are, of course, the defendants of the first Witch of Isolath, who had one of the Primordial Flames, if you remember that far. And ten humanity later, our covenant deepens and we get nothing! But we also get this bonfire, which, of course, is useful. Now, like all Firekeeper bonfires, this immediately rewards you with 10 Estus Flasks. Actually, can I reinforce my Estus Flask? I don't think I can. Alright! Are you prepared to dedicate 
yourself to our fair lady, then I will make available whatever you require. If you need something, ask me first. And he, of course, is another pyromancy trainer as well as a... Uh, well, actually, I guess he's not. He just shows you the Daughters of Chaos. But he can modify your Pyromancy Flame, which we will go ahead and upgrade a fair amount because we're going to be using those. There's no time for idle chat. Think only of our fair lady and what she may need. All right. And, of course, for just joining the Covenant, we have the Great Chaos Fireball, which I could attune and use right now. So I will. This is actually why I got the second attunement slot. What's down here, you ask? Well, right now, absolutely nothing. And that is part of why we have to come back later. But don't worry about that. This is the first time that Dark Souls actually starts to hint at you that what you're doing may not exactly be good. I mean... It's entirely possible that she was infecting these humans and all these eggs and ugh, kind of horrifying, but at the same time, she's just such a tragic figure and we'll learn more about her once we have the ring that lets us talk to her. And then you're going to feel even worse because I know I always do. So now we have to backtrack and that's going to be fun. Um, Since I will be coming back to this eight area later in the game, I will show off a secret area that you can get to from uh, uh, the previous bonfire. Not the previous bonfire, the bonfire we're going to right now in a later video. Don't worry, I know about the Great Hollow. It's just that this is not the best time to go there. And I don't want anyone else, you know, suffering horrible cursed fates that I did on my first couple of playthroughs. So I'm not even going to go there. Not even going to show you how until later. But then I'll do it, because why not? So to get back across the swamp in Blight Town, you basically just have to run back across. That's really stupid advice, and I'm not going to actually complete my thought there. Rolling in poison is a great idea, by the way. It just is great. Now, I mentioned that there were two ways into Blight Town in an earlier video and that what we essentially took was the front door while there is a back door that is arguably shorter but more difficult and that's actually where we're going to go today as soon as I find my way back to the bonfire and ignore these fire bugs because screw fire bugs they're awful all right perfect and we still have 10 SS flasks Usually what you're going to see me do, assuming I have the humanity to do it, is to go ahead and reinforce bonfires before bosses. This is, generally speaking, a good idea because, think about it this way, if you use so much as two humanity in a boss fight to recover, then you have used just as much as you would for having 10 Estus Flasks in that area permanently across all New Game Pluses, which just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So generally speaking, what you want to do is always revert and reinforce, and if you're of the mind to do it, you want to go ahead and summon people. That's where I was going with that. Sorry, I was thinking, I need to introduce this place. It's to the right of the bonfire, but it's kind of the only machinery place, or one of the few places of basic kind of construction that you'll find in Dark Souls. It's kind of not necessarily out of place, but it's odd because, well, actually that's not true, so then another place in the game has areas similar to this. <laughs> but we'll get there when we get there. I always like water mills, even though this is a giant hell swamp, and I don't understand how it would even be running. Where is the water? Why am I eating purple moss? Yeah, That's a good question. The insects are fairly annoying, especially because, for some reason, they're not even the normal insects that just, you know, spit at you. 
or sting you. They actually do spit at you. That was the right thing. That was what they actually do. Yes. Which, actually, fun fact, hornets in Japan can actually spew their venom at you, which may be more of where this enemy comes from than the mosquitoes that I'm more familiar with personally. Not that I really have any desire to be familiar with some mosquitoes at any point in time. I think I'm missing a ladder, yes. This ladder is actually, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the... Oh, no. No, this is not what I wanted at all. Wait, yes it is! Haha! -ha! But also, this is about to be one of the most hateful areas in the game. As you can see by the numerous dots going through there. Okay, Poison Moss Clump, I am fine with you. I am going to get toxic in this next area. It's just inevitable. Oh, I'm already toxic. Okay, great. I hate this particular area in the game. It's probably one of the most infuriating, but you do need to come here and basically just accept the fact that you are going to need your Estus Flasks, hopefully 10 of them as I have, to get through this place without dying. It is a pain. Toxic actually in general is just one of the most difficult ailments to deal with simply because it does so much damage and the reagent to get rid of it is very rare. Thankfully getting hit with more of a status effect while you're still suffering from the duration of a status effect does not inflict more of the status effects duration. The only one that this is not true of is bleeding and that's because bleeding instantly empties the status bar as soon as it takes effect. Okay, it's another jump. I couldn't do these before, but I still can't do them. Oh, I'm gonna die. But at least I had a good run. Actually, I think I'll be okay. Hopefully. Oh, man. But at this point, you should be fairly well versed. Oh, ow. Bad dog. I hate dogs in games. I mean... They're always the least satisfying enemies to fight because this is what we're after, by the way, a Firekeeper Soul. You absolutely want to come through this area and get this because it's the only way to make the Estus Flask, your only reliable healing, any better. In other Dark Souls or such games, actually in Dark Souls 2, I guess I should say because that's the only other game in the series aside from kind of Demon Souls but kind of not really. Oh, hello. What was I saying? Ah, it's not near as big of a deal because you have other ways to heal here, not so much. Though you can potentially do a healing clerical build, but it puts a lot of stat points into pure healing and it's a harder stat spread to manage. Oh my God, if I, okay, I have a better idea for this dog. Well, of course, aside from the fact that dogs, of course, are resistant to fire because they breathe fire, that would have been great. I don't like using humanities to heal off toxic, especially since I'm just going to need to heal again anyway, but ah, there's nothing for it. But I will keep exploring this area and showing off more treasures that you can get. Now, similarly to the Hydra, if you find yourself having trouble getting across jumps. Wow, is this really a dead end? Cool. Glad I spent the time looking at that. If you're having trouble getting through jumps, or, you know, falling and dying every single time you make them, because you're me, then don't be afraid to take off your pants and run at them that way. But really, it makes a big difference because you move faster, and I don't think you necessarily jump farther, but it's much easier with the momentum. At least it always has been to me. And likewise, if you're carrying really, really heavy armor, you shouldn't attempt the jumps more or less at all. Now, we actually could go immediately back and reinforce our bonfire, or our Estus Flask, at the... Uh, what is happening here? Okay, I'm just gonna 
keep going. I could go reinforce my Estus Flask at her, but since we're already out here, I don't feel like backtracking it there. It's... I'm sorry, that thing's writhing, just... something about it. Something about it wasn't right. Oh, here we have the red or crimson gear. It's actually extremely useful gear. I use that it a lot actually in my initial playthrough of the game simply because I like red mage hats and that's essentially what that gear is an homage to. And I like it. And you have to deal with that. But aside from that, there are a few more treasures you can get over in this general area. But what we're really looking for at this point is the alternate way out. Now, if I was smart, I would go ahead and walk back to the bonfire because I don't have any SS flasks remaining. But I'm not smart. No one can accuse me of that. It's just not going to happen. What am I looking for? Actually, I think I missed the... Yeah, I did. I totally did. I missed exactly what I was looking for. Okay, I think I remember now. This is part of why I hate Blight Town. I've spoken about this before, but vertical levels are usually very frustrating tr to traverse. Because they don't seem, I mean, even though they do, they don't seem to play by the same rules, and failing at a vertical levels puzzle is much more time-consuming than, well, most other puzzles in a game. I think I talked about this a little bit in Link to the Past, my Link to the Past Let's Play, but it's worth repeating here. Where am I going? Oh. Oh, this is bad. This is in no way... Okay, so you might be wondering, what the hell do you do if you're an idiot and do this? Now remember, if you are at in a menu, you can still run and do other things. But... <laughs> Don't run too far. Okay, that was great. Hmm, wonderful. Alright, I am going to show how to get out of here, so I will meet you back at the watermill. Hello again. I'm on a watermill. I think I realized exactly what I was missing. I'm actually not going to go after my corpse here. It only was 4,000 soul at souls and 2,000... Er, two <laughs> okay, if it was 2,000 humanity, I would go after that, like, so very hard. I would just be infuriated, but it's not. It was two, which is not a big deal to lose at this point, especially with how much humanity I have saved up. So the back door out of Blight Town is in fact over this way. Oh! My corpse is right here. Perfect. Great. I was going to use a homeward bone to accomplish the essentially same thing, but that's just not how that turned out. Okay. Great, I have my body once more, and something died. I take all the credit for it. Now, if I'm not mistaken, what I'm looking for is a ladder right around this area. It actually has been some time since I walked through Blight Town last. Here it is. Or, well, yeah, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Alright, so to the left of the Tunnel with Firekeeper Soul, you will find this ladder, which will take you back out of Blight Town, though in a slightly different way than you came into Blight Town. And of course, you'll have to fight more bugs, but, you know, that's a given. Oh, Blight Town. This is, in my opinion, kind of the low point of the game, even though I love Quilag and her sister. And they are just absolutely fascinating enemies, and the Covenant itself is fascinating, considering you can enter it right after murdering, murdering one of those things. But, graphically speaking, it's probably the least impressive and least interesting area in the game. Here we have the key to the new Londo runes, which is extremely important. Thank god I picked that up. And, of course, over here we have some fatties. Some roaring, roaring fatties. Now, they actually shouldn't be too much of a trouble at all, except somehow I got knocked over. 
And you can just dispatch of them the same way you did before. They're not difficult. Fighting two at once might be difficult, which is exactly what you have to do right up ahead. So, if you are fighting multiple enemies at once, it... <laughs> don't do that! Lesson one. Don't do anything that I do, and you'll probably be better off for it. Now, thankfully, my stamina has gone up since the last time I fought these guys, so I have a much easier time blocking their attacks. Which is useful. I didn't find the only great shield in the game that you can use with Lord's low strength in my time down here, but that's okay. I would actually keep rather keep a parrying shield anyway, because great shields, even though they are very powerful and require almost no stamina to block attacks with, they can't parry and they're extremely heavy, which are, generally speaking, not things I like. Be wary of poison as you leave Blight Town. And so we come out here to the Valley of Drakes. This is a completely different area. And another area that I actually just kind of love. Now, before I go too far in this area, okay, this is where I want to be. What I want to do is actually venture a little bit into the Valley of Drakes where I will immediately and promptly get murdered. But for the next area in the game that I intend to do, this is very, very important. So, first of all, as I was saying, gorgeous. This area is just so much more visually interesting than uh, Blight Town is. And second, yes, that is a gigantic corpse that is sitting next to a couple of items. So, obviously, obviously, it's not any kind of trap, and we'll just go, go get those items. Hey, there's why I wanted. Roll. If you didn't figure it out, roll. And also, run. Because, at this point in the game, you aren't likely to be able to take on the undead dragon. But thankfully, since he's only half a body, and he's over there, we can safely ignore him until I feel like coming back and dealing with him straight up. So that'll be fun. That... <laughs> I hate him. He killed me so easily, and we actually really needed that sword. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Uh, where is it? Where did I put it? There it is. Oh, we need 14 faith to use that. this. Well, that's completely all right. I will gladly put in a couple of more points into faith to show off why this weapon might actually be useful. There are other ways to achieve what I'm going to use it for, and here's where you use the key to the new Londo ruins, but this is why I think the weapon was put in the game for. Now, you might be wondering, if this is the back door, quote-unquote, to Blight Town, how could you come here earlier? And that is actually a good question, and one that's also extremely easy to answer. With the Mastery Key, you can unlock that at the very beginning of the game and go into Blight Town that way. Also, here's a guy. Hmm? Well, this is unusual. You haven't lost your head. And more importantly, you're free. How on earth? Well, I shouldn't pry. I'm Ricky of Vinheim. I was once an established smith. Look at me now. Can you believe? What is it? Have you? Oh no. Don't worry. I've no intention of escape. It's safe here. I can't bear the thought of going hollow out there. Although, I must admit, there's not much to occupy myself. How about this? I could forge your weapons, albeit with rather minimal tools. I'll show you what made me the best in Vinny. And here we have another blacksmith who offers a couple of spells, oddly enough, as his only inventory items, and can modify your equipment. Now, he actually can change your weapons into magic weapons, which will scale off of intelligence instead of whatever they scale with otherwise. So in, I would lose a lot of my scaling but gain a lot of magic damage and gain intelligence scaling. Come back soon. So 
smithing helps soothe my nerves. Don't let me wither away our lives. Hooray for more depressing Dark Souls characters. Pretty much everyone in this game has a horrible story attached to them. It's great. Everyone loves horrible stories. Now, which one of these towers do I want to go into? I think it's this one. So there is one way you can actually do intelligence builds and spellcasting builds is to reforge whatever weapons you happen to find into magic weapons. In fact, it's probably the one of the more powerful ways to play the game because there are a couple of weapons that require intelligence and having access to very powerful spells alongside great weapons and armor is, generally speaking, extremely useful. But that is not the build I've opted for, so we really won't need his services and he will have to run away. Now, one thing that's really unfortunate in Dark Souls is that all the blacksmiths to forge the various weapons into the various types of weapons they can be forged into are scattered all across the land, making it very hard and very difficult to actually build your character how you might want to build them. At the very least, it makes forging a pain. And if the music didn't give it away, we're back in Firelink Shrine. I loved this moment so much, coming back up the stairs and realizing you're back where you've been before, and... What's this? Why? It's the close of the Firekeeper. So how's that? And the Black Eye Orb. Now, I haven't talked about these, but orbs let you invade the worlds of other players. Or, in this case, invade world of murderer of Firekeeper. I feel like there should be a the in there, but that's all right. If you talk to this guy... Did you ring the second bell? That is incredible, I must say. But now, we have a new problem. It's noisy, it snores, and its breath is lethal. This is no laughing matter, I tell you. Mm-hmm. Damn. That stench. And I was really beginning to like it here. <sighs> Maybe it's time I do something about it. You might be wondering what exactly he's talking about. Me? And before I get into that, I should mention, when the Firekeeper is absent, you can't light bonfires. So Firelink Shrine at this point in the game becomes effectively worthless to you until you can invade. Well, let's talk about that when we get there. And for now, let's go see what this guy was talking about. Oh hey! It's that. It's a gigantic snake. See you in the next one!